Take a minute, if you would, and picture one of the most beautiful natural landscapes that you have ever been to and experienced. Can you picture that? Maybe time seemed to stop. You didn't want to leave. Maybe like the apostles, you wanted to pitch a tent there. Maybe it was really peaceful. It's a place where you could feel God's presence. For me, a place like that is a place in Ireland called Sleeve League. It's in County Donegal. Me as a young seminarian visiting there. And I remember, I remember going there and you drive, you, you arrive in the foothills, you park your car after splitting herds of sheep in half as they buy past your car, and you, you walk way, way up. So you, your car is almost a distant memory, and you can see over these beautiful sea cliffs. There's these little wee boats just ambling around like ants looking for some food. Maybe Father E's leprechaun from last week is waving. I don't remember that, but it was such a peaceful place. I felt God's presence there so richly. And maybe for you, what you were thinking of was the highlands of Cape Breton. Maybe that's the place. Likewise, beautiful sea cliffs. You can see the water down below. Bald eagles are soaring beneath you. It's an incredible place. Maybe you feel a sense of peace there. You feel God's presence there so richly. Certainly a beautiful place. Cape Breton is God's country, right? That makes Cape Bretoners God's people. Being God's people is central to what we're talking about over the next few weeks. We're just underway with a new preaching series called Ark of the Covenant. And all through Lent, we're going to be following that ark right from the bad news of the fall of Adam and Eve and the state of separation from God that that put us in through successive covenants that God has initiated right through to the new and everlasting covenant in Jesus himself. And as we're talking, we're always going to be referring back to the problem of sin, and ahead to the solution only found in Jesus himself, discovering what it means to be God's people and to live in his country. And today, God's geography takes us to the mountains. Now, not the cliffs of Cape Breton. This might surprise you, but God actually can be found in places other than Cape Breton. I know that that's shocking for us, maybe not to Deacon Art, who, uh, who knows God can be found in Newfoundland as well. But um, <laughs> God always loves to encounter us. And, he, and for some reason, in a particular way, he likes to encounter his people on the mountains. And this is what we find in the first reading with Abraham, who is in the land of Moriah, and he's climbing up a mountain. Now, this, this Moriah kind of reminds me, if you drop the H of, of Moria, which is a, a place in the Lord of the Rings, you've read those books or seen those movies, there's this mine that the fellowship has to go in and they encounter goblins and they encounter basically a demon. It's not a nice place at all, although one of them thinks it is. But what's going on there is dreadful, and what's going on here in the first reading seems to be dreadful as well. We might want to ask ourselves, what kind of God asks someone to sacrifice his son? What kind of God would do that, would demand human sacrifice? If that seems wretched to you, and it should, that's good, because it actually is wretched to God as well. You see, all around in the ancient world, different peoples appeased their gods through human sacrifices. That was the kind of relationship that they had. And God was saying, enough. Enough of this. Abraham, your heart is with me. You wouldn't withhold anything from me, not even your own son, but I don't want sacrifices like these other nations make. Those are abominations. I don't want that kind of appeasement. I want your heart. I want your obedience. I want your trust. I want a relationship with you. And this is the covenant I am going to make with you. Instead of you appeasing me, instead of you providing me for me, what kind of thing could you provide for me anyways? 
I want you to trust me. I want your obedience. And I'm going to bless you. I'm going to be with you, you and your descendants. You are my people. Trust me and follow me. Which are words that our Father, our Heavenly Father, reiterates in the Gospel today. As He speaks to us about Jesus, about His own Son, He says to us, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to Him. And so the covenant that God makes with Abraham, what God says to Abraham, He says now to us, through Jesus, through His Son, listen to Jesus. Trust Jesus. Follow Jesus. Jesus is going to provide for you. Jesus is going to be with you. You are my people. And this is good news. It's good news for us, and it's good news that Peter, James, and John are getting a foretaste of as they're encountering the presence of God on another mountain. They're taking it in. It's timeless. Jesus is transfigured before them. And guess what? Just like us, when we're in those kinds of places, when we don't want to leave, they don't want to leave either. They want to pitch their tents right there. And of course, Jesus wouldn't let them do that. They have to go back down the mountain because God needs to finish what He started in calling His people away from sin back to Himself. And so the apostles are going to have to trust. They are going to have to trust Jesus enough to go back down that mountain. They're going to have to trust Jesus as they go to Jerusalem. They're going to have to trust Jesus as He hangs on that cross. And they're going to have to trust Jesus as He lays in the tomb. They're going to have to remember what Jesus said to them today about the resurrection, that the blessing is coming. It's going to come. The covenant that we cannot live without, through the blood of Jesus, our sins are forgiven, and we are made sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. And that is amazing. We couldn't make it back to God by offering other people as sacrifices, thankfully. We couldn't even make it back to God by simply offering ourselves apart from God. We cannot initiate the covenant. Only God can. And so although we got ourselves into this mess on our own, God Himself has to get us out, and He does. He does that. Jesus will go back down that mountain. He will go to Jerusalem, and He will offer Himself as the sacrifice. Not like Isaac, who didn't know what he was getting into when he was going up to that mountain with Abraham. No, Jesus goes freely. Jesus lays down his life of his own accord, embracing what's to come. After climbing one more mountain, the mountain of Golgotha, obtaining for us everlasting life and calling forth from us a response. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I will follow you. Jesus, I belong to you. Jesus, I love you. Bring me into the blessings of our Father in heaven through the Holy Spirit. You know, friends, sometimes we try, to, we try to change the deal. We try to initiate things on our own instead of receiving the covenant from the Lord. Have you ever done this, tried to cut a deal with the Lord? If I do this, Lord, you're going to let me into heaven, right? It could be coming to Mass, praying a prayer giving to the poor, even our Lenten sacrifices, all good things, all things we should do, all things that are actually part of our response, our yes as disciples to the Lord. But they don't replace this. They don't replace what Jesus did for us on the cross. You and I needed and continue to need Jesus, our Savior. He initiates the covenant and we respond. And as we respond, we experience the great blessings of living a life in the Lord. It's such a great adventure following Jesus. It takes us into a community of faith. It takes us into worship of our God. It takes us to the homes of those who have no one to visit them. It takes us to the poor. It takes us to the homeless. 
It takes us into opportunities to share our faith. It takes us into acts of loving service. All from this covenant. All through this relationship. All from an encounter with the living Lord Jesus. Whether on top of a mountain or with a group of friends in the Lord. When we respond. Yes, Lord. I trust you. Yes, Lord, I give my life to follow you. Yes, Lord, I belong to you. Yes, Lord, I love you.